Hey, it's Tammy M here of TammyMCoaching.com, empowerment life coach and creator of the Freedom Class. And today I want to take you inside the mindset of the covert narcissist. Scary stuff. You ready? <laughs> Now, before I begin this video, I just want to quickly announce that we have a few spots available in the calendar this week for the fr free one-to-one -one consult with either myself or a member of my team for the Freedom Class program. So if that's of interest to you, be sure to stick around till the end of the video for the announcement on how to register for the free consult. And with that, let's get started. So let's talk about what's going on inside the mindset of the covert narcissist. You know, the truth is, it can be really difficult to spot this person, this particular personality type, when we're first getting to know someone, when we first meet them and in the initial stages of getting to know them. And the reason for that is they tend to present so differently than your classic narcissist. You know, your classic narcissist, although initially, you know, they show up on their best behavior with the big mask being presented, they're not necessarily easy to, you know, uh, nail down or spot or, you know, really figure out this is what I'm dealing with initially either. But there's some telltale signs that are real clear, right? Like they will, you know, an overt narcissist will more often than not tend to show up with this sense of incredible self-confidence, unbelievable charm, a certain amount of grandiosity, a certain amount of entitlement, often an irrational sense of entitlement, right? Like the rules don't apply to them. They're above, they're superior, they're entitled, they're entitled to special treatment, special faith etc. So there are some real obvious signs that make it easier to spot an overt narcissist sooner or later, right? Well, the covert narcissist can be a whole lot trickier because they show up very differently, very differently. They present, in particular initially, as being very shy and timid and reserved and self-effacing and insecure and anxious. And none of those words are what we normally think of when we're thinking of the term destructive narcissist, right? When we're thinking of what an individual is like when they land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, we don't typically think of shy, reserved, insecure, anxious. But that really is how the covert narcissist presents initially. Now, the truth is they are just as entitled, just as destructive. They are equally lacking in conscience and empathy. In other words, they have little to no capacity to understand the effects, the consequences of their behavior, their attitudes, their actions, their choices, their decisions on you or anyone anyone else. They, they, those wires don't connect and quite frankly, they don't care. They just don't care. So just like the covert narcissist, sorry, just like the overt narcissist, the covert narcissist is equally lacking in empathy and conscience, equally entitled, but they show up in the world completely differently, which makes it a little trickier to see them coming because you really think you're dealing with this gentle, sweet, kind soul who, in my experience, often is pretty good at projecting this image of being very loving and kind and generous and giving and caring and empathic even, right? But it's a fake, phony facade. It's a mask. It's a performance. And if you travel down the road with them for any length of time, you'll soon find out there's always an agenda. Their kind, generous nature comes with a whole bunch of strings attached. It's always about manipulation, emotional manipulation and perception manipulation. These are folks who are starved for external approval and validation far more than the overt narcissist in many respects. And they will do whatever it takes to manipulate your perception so that you think highly of them. 
get close enough and you'll find out just what a facade, just what a performance that actually is. Now, when it comes to getting into the nitty gritty of what's going on inside the mindset of a covert narcissist, here are some things that are real dead giveaways that that's actually who and what you're dealing with. First and foremost, a chronic victim stance, a chronic victim mentality. When you're dealing with someone who lands on the spectrum of covert destructive narcissism, they are a covert narcissist, your first clue is going to be the fact that no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the situation, no matter what the truth of the story is, they somehow always manage to be the victim in the story. Even if they themselves have created the problems, created the drama, created the crisis, they're the ones who were actually doing the bullying, the abusing, the lying, the cheating. No matter what, they're going to be running a victim narrative because their whole identity is wrapped up in what a victim they are. Next, they are deeply insecure and anxious. Deeply insecure and anxious. Now, in my opinion, all people, overt or covert, who land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism are deeply insecure. Not necessarily anxious, but deeply insecure. These are deeply fear-based, shame-based people to their core. Overt narcissists are a whole lot more adept at hiding that behind a great big thick wall of arrogance and a false sense of superiority and you know all the grandiosity and the manipulation and all the stuff that goes along with the overt narcissist personality type, right? A covert narcissist is going to wear their insecurity and anxiety on their sleeve you're going to notice in spite of the fact that they do carry an irrational sense of entitlement, they do deeply internally feel a sense of um, entitled to special treatment and special favors, just like all narcissists. They're more prone to lead with the insecurity and the anxiety. These people are riddled to the core with insecurity, anxiety, guilt, fear, shame, and they don't hide it as well as their more overt counterparts. Now, the next characteristic that is a real telltale sign that you're dealing with a more covert narcissist is pathological levels of envy and jealousy. And it comes out sideways. They don't even realize they're giving themselves away, but they have pathological, they carry pathological levels of envy and jealousy. And if you're anything like me, I actually don't have a jealous bone in my body. I didn't land on the planet that way. It's not at all the way that I'm wired. And because I don't carry it at all, for the longest time, it was a real blind spot for me, a terrible blind spot. I couldn't see that coming to save my life. Things have changed in, you know, on a long, long journey of healing and recovery where I'm able to discern that that's actually what's coming at me today. But for a long time, that was a bit of a handicap. When we don't carry it, it's, you know, at all, it, in any way, at, on any level, it's harder sometimes to see that coming. Um, these folks carry unbelievable pathological levels of envy and jealousy. And another thing that's big with these people is projection. Now, all people project to some degree. The more unresolved issues, the more shadow, the more garbage, unresolved trauma, wounding issues that we have in our subconscious, the more we project. And this is why people who land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, overt or covert, project so much because they carry so much 
deeply buried subconscious, right? Well, with covert narcissist, in particular, it's their guilt and their shame that they cannot own and accept. They can't, you know, they behave appallingly and some aspect of them knows that, but they can't for the life of them look at that that would be too painful for them so they have to project it outside of themselves to get rid of it because the burden is too heavy to carry right so they project all their own guilt and shame onto others i'll give you an example there's a couple that i know in my life who um a couple of years ago she decided to have an affair with his a good, his good friend. In fact, sadly, <clears throat> the individual was the best man at the couple's wedding, right? So clearly a good friend, right? So she had an affair on her husband with her husband's good friend, who was the best man at their wedding. Today, she is running the narrative that her husband has been having an affair with their niece who is like 30 years his junior like there's a there's got to be at least a 30 year age gap there rather than owning and acknowledging the truth of her own transgressions dealing with that and everything that might be going on underneath that she prefers to protect herself by projecting her guilt and shame onto her closest, nearest, favorite target, by running a smear campaign about how he's the one who's been having the extra marital affairs. You know, another example from my own life, my mother, who I believe was high spectrum, malignant, covert pathological covert narcissist truth be told fortunately for me she walked out of my life when i was three and as painful as that was and that was certainly excruciatingly painful to have to grow up knowing that your mother lives 20 minutes away and for reasons that you don't understand as a child doesn't want to have anything to do with you as an adult i can look back and realize that <clears throat> i was being protect protected fully and um, I was much better off. But the point here, be in terms of the, the levels of projection that will go on with a covert narcissist, no matter how next level insane and nonsensical it may be, this is the way they operate. This is the way they go through life. So my mother, who, again, in my experience, in my um, experience of her, was very high spectrum, covert narcissist, walked out of my life when I was three. I reconnected with her for a year and a half as a teenager. I went looking for her. Even as a teen inside of a year and a half, I didn't have the language, I didn't know what it was, but I knew whatever that was, I, I backed away. I just stopped calling. That's all it took. I just stopped calling. And that was the end of that. Many years later, in my mid 30s, I reconnected with the woman again. My thinking at the time, and this was, this was just pre-serious recovery. So it was my early to mid 30s. I reconnected with the woman again for a year and a half. At that time, I was thinking to myself, even though it was pre-recovery, I had been rolling around in personal development, doing all the things, working with life coaches, <laughs> had been to see some therapists, had been deeply involved in spirituality, had been on a path. So uh, my thinking at the time was, you know, with the tools that I have today, I know there's issues there, but with the tools that I have today, maybe, I have a shot at making this work. And the truth is, in retrospect, I had no chance. I had no chance. I stood no chance with this woman, but I gave it my best shot. I gave it my best shot. In that short container of a year and a half, the second time I tried to reconcile with my biological mother, she actually had the audacity to say to my half-sister in front of me, well, I hope she doesn't disappear on us again. 
This is a woman who walked out of my life when I was three, lived 20 minutes away from me, and I had to go looking for her as a teen. All I had to do was stop calling and my phone never rang again, which was for what would have been close to another 20 years, pretty close to it, 15 plus years. And her narrative was that I was the one who had done the rejecting. I was the one who had pulled the disappearing act. I was the one who had abandoned her. That is the level and the extent of projecting that these people will do, even though it's next level, nonsensical, everyone in the room knows the truth of the story and what's really gone on, their narrative always has them, as I said, coming up as the victim and fully projecting their guilt their shame that they cannot own. They can't take responsibility for their appalling attitudes and behavior. They cannot own that stuff. So they have to project it onto the closest nearest target. And if that's their child who they've done serious damage to, no problem. As long as they don't have to take any ownership or be held accountable in any way for their own behavior. As I said, the couple who, the cheater, who's the real cheater in this situation? But the narrative, the smear campaign serves a purpose. I don't have to look at my stuff as long as I'm making you the villain and I get to be the victim in this, no matter how poorly I have behaved in this situation. It's really quite sick stuff. It's really quite destructive stuff. It's next level excruciatingly painful stuff for anyone who has the great misfortune of being sucked into the vortex of a relationship, any relationship, with someone who lands on the spectrum of covert narcissist personality or personality disorder. Now, in addition, they are also highly manipulative, seriously passive aggressive, emotionally immature, very childish, and as I said, lacking in empathy and conscience. So the truth is when we have a little insight into the fact that this is how these people operate, this is how they show up in the world, you, if, if you're a person of empathy, you've got to have some compassion because what an awful way to go through life. What an awful way to go through life. Wreaking havoc and destructive, crying poor me the entire time and acting out like a wounded to toddler, you know, and in, I, I, an entitled, childish ingrate. Those three words most aptly describe what you're dealing with when we're talking about someone who is covert personality type, covert personality disorder. Yes, let's have compassion for these people. Clearly what's going on with them is a whole world of pain. No matter how well or not well, they may or may not be hiding it on any given day. That really is the truth of what's going on with them. But the other thing that's true is we can't fix them. We can't change them. We can't put a dent in that stuff. You know, just like when I showed up in my, you know, early to mid thirties, that second time around trying to make it work with my biological mother, you know, hoping that this time I might be able to get it right. Right. Not, I had no idea. I did not know what I did not know at the time. If I knew then what I know now, famous last words, right. I probably wouldn't have wasted more than five minutes on that, on that endeavor because what I do know is they don't change. An individual of this ilk, of this nature, is not going to change. So, you know, the vital thing for us is, yes, you know, 
have compassion. You know, I made a decision to remove myself from that dynamic so that I could take care of myself and then just love the woman from a distance. That was the best shot I had. I didn't stand a chance in having any sort of healthy, reasonably, even remotely healthy relationship with that individual. And if you're enmeshed in any relationship with a covert narcissist, it's vital that you understand that they aren't going to change. You're not going to put a dent in it. You can't be perfect enough, good enough, productive enough, helpful enough, kind enough, loving enough, spiritual enough, patient enough to make a difference, to put a dent in what's going on with them. So your choice really boils down to how much do you want to continue to be affected by the mindset of someone who is as maladaptive, who's relating, I want to say skills, but you know, it's a colossal lack of skills, right? Like whose, whose, whose method of relating is so maladaptive that any real, even remotely healthy relationship, I mean, there's, you know, there's little to no chance there. I'm going to say no chance at all. So how long do you want to continue to be on the receiving end of the projections, the lies, the smearing, the manipulation, the toxicity, all of the games that get played, all of the passive aggressive behavior, all of the childish outbursts, all of the rage that comes along with your not being willing to be manipulated or play the game or go along with the bullshit story or prop them up in their victim stance. The moment you draw a line in the sand and say, yeah, no, that's actually not the truth. Oh, that's not quite the way I remember it. Uh, that's not my experience. Um, yeah, n no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I didn't say that. The moment you start setting boundaries, you're going to be met with rage. Now that that might be seething, clenched jaw. It's going to come out at you, you know, um, in a very backward sort of way, or it might be full fledged attack. If they feel cornered in any way, if you, God forbid you decide to hold them accountable for their appalling, often brutally disgusting behavior and attitudes, you know, and they feel cornered, it's not going to come at you, you know, through the back door, it's going to come right at you. So how long do you want to continue to be affected by someone else's pathological personality disorder? Right? So yes, carry love. Yes, have compassion. But have love and compassion for yourself more than anyone if you don't know one well if you don't know one well and the longer you hang in there allowing yourself to be affected negatively by all the bs that a covert narcissist brings together or brings to the table the longer you hang in there and play that game with them the bigger the price you pay the bigger the price you pay so when would now be a good time to say no more? I love me more. Now might be a good time to do that. My friends, I hope you got some value out of this today. If you liked what you heard, be sure to give it a like, drop a comment below and let me know what your biggest takeaway was. Share it with your friends if you think it would be helpful. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. So happy to have you here. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos throughout the week. And as I mentioned at the top of the video, we do have some spots available in the calendar this week for the free one-to-one -one consult with either myself or a member of my team for the Freedom Plus program. So if that's of interest you, be sure to check out the link in the description below where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with us. And with that, I'm going to call it a wrap. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. And as always, I will leave you with this. Know your value. Know your value and unlock your freedom. Much love. Bye for now.